If you want to write a Python program that makes a line of code, or even several lines of code, execute over and over again, you can do it using a while loop. Let me show you how. I'll save the program and run it first, then I'll tell you what's going on. You can see that my program outputs the word hello four times, followed by the message all done. In the program, I have a variable which I've called x, and I'm saying while x is less than 5, print hello. And then this line of code is adding 1 to x. Let x become whatever it used to be, plus one more. Everything that's indented under the word while is part of the while loop. These two lines of code will execute repeatedly, and they'll execute repeatedly as long as x is less than 5. Because I'm adding 1 to x each time these instructions are repeated, eventually x will become 5, so the loop will stop. And then this final line of code will execute. As I said, I can use a while loop to repeat several instructions. For example, So now I have four lines of code which are part of the while loop. Watch what happens when I run this program. Hello, how are you? Have a nice day. Four times, and then at the very end, all done. That final message is not part of the loop. By the way, my loop repeats four times, while x is less than five. If I want those instructions to repeat five times, I can do this, while x is less than six. Or I can say while x is less than or equal to five. I'm getting five sets of messages this time. If I want, I can also repeat a block of code forever, like this. If you think about it, because I'm not adding 1 to x every time we pass through the loop, x is never going to reach 5. So what I have here is called an infinite loop. I can stop it running simply by closing this window. Your program is still running. Do you want to kill it? Yes. An infinite loop can be very useful. Let me show you what I mean. Inside the loop, I'm asking the user to type something in particular, in this case just the word hello. And then I'm testing what the user has typed. So if the user types hello, then I'll say hello back to them. Otherwise, I'm going to report that that's not what I asked them to type. And the loop will repeat. You can see it's continually prompting the user to type the word hello. When the user does type hello, they get a greeting back. But you can see that the loop is still running. I can fix that with the break command. Now watch what happens. When the user eventually types hello, the loop can come to an end, and therefore so can the program. Now I'm going to show you how I can use a loop to do some counting. This time I'm outputting the value of x. x is the variable which controls the number of times the loop executes. Watch what happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all done. Let's suppose I want to count up to 10. I can either say while x is less than or equal to 10, or I can say while x is less than 11. It means the same thing. What if I want to count upwards, but just the odd numbers? I can do this. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I'm counting up two at a time, starting at one. Or I can count the even numbers. 
To do that, all I need to do is change the initial value of x. Now think about it. How would you count up to 20, three at a time? Let me show you. It's that simple. If I can count up, I can also count down. Like this. This time, x is starting with a value of 10. And I'm saying while x is bigger than 0, output x, and then we subtract 1 from x. So every time we pass through the loop, x gets smaller. Eventually it will reach 0. In the last video, I showed you how we could put a delay in our code using time.sleep. Let's do that here. First of all, I need to import the time library, which gives me the commands that I need. And then inside the loop, I'm going to say time.sleep. And the number in brackets, the number one, is the number of seconds that I want to sleep. Let's go for half a second. And perhaps I'll change the message at the end. Counting down from 5 this time. Let's suppose I want to count down like this, but I want to allow the person who's using my program to say what they want to count down from. I could do this. What do you want to count down from? I would like to count down from three, please. So the user types in the number they want to count down from. I put that into a variable and then I take what the user has typed and I put that into X. Otherwise, the program is the same. Notice how I'm using the int function to convert what the user types from a string into an integer. X is my loop counter and it needs to be a number. Now let me set you a couple of challenges which you can try for yourself. Here's the first challenge. The user is being prompted to add a number to a total. So I'll type a number and then I'm prompted for another number and then another and I'm continually prompted until such time as I type the word stop and then I'm told what the total is. And here's the second challenge. Can you write a program to output your five times table like this? For both of these challenges, you're going to need to use the int function to convert strings into integers, and you're going to need the str function to convert numbers back into strings. If you'd like to try this, pause the video now and then resume in a few moments and I'll show you the solution. So, here's my program to output the five times table. You can see it's actually rather simple. I have a variable called x, which is going to be my loop counter, a variable called result, which I'm going to put the results of calculations into, and here's my loop. While x is less than or equal to 12, because I want my times table to go up to 12, the result will be x multiplied by 5. First time through the loop, that's 1 times 5. Second time through the loop, 2 times 5. Then 3 times 5, 4 times 5, and so on. And I have a print statement here, which is outputting the value of x with some extra text, and then the value of result. I could just as easily use this to do my 7 times table, for example, or my 12 times table. Can you see what you'd need to change? And here's my program, which keeps a running total of the numbers that the user inputs until they type stop. I have a variable called total, which will keep a running total. And I have my loop counter, x, which I've initialized to be 1. And then I'm saying while x is less than 5, 
But notice that x is not changing inside the loop, so I have an infinite loop here. This will go on forever, until the break command is executed. So the user is prompted to enter a number. We check if it's the word stop. If it is the word stop, we output the total, and then we break out of the while loop. Otherwise, we take what the user has entered, we add it to the existing total, and put the result back into total. Why don't you give these programs a try yourself? You'll see some more uses of loops in later videos of this series.